Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 17 to 26. Jesus teaches and heals. When Jesus had come down from the hill with the apostles, he stood on a level place for a large number of his disciples. A large crowd of people was there from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal cities of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those who were troubled by evil spirits also came and were healed. All the people tried to touch him, for power was going out from him and healing them all. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, Happy are you poor, the kingdom of God is yours. Happy are you who are hungry now, you will be filled. Happy are you who weep now, you will laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, reject you, insult you, and say that you are evil, all because of the Son of Man. Be glad when that happens, and dance for joy because a great reward is kept for you in heaven. For their ancestors did the very same to the prophets. But how terrible for you who are rich now. You have had your easy life. How terrible for you who are full now. You will go hungry. How terrible for you who laugh now. You will mourn and weep. How terrible when all people speak well of you. Their ancestors said the very same things about the false prophets. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> For many of us, even when we are bad at navigation, a map printed on paper was a very magical thing. Maps printed on paper were joy, weren't they? Beautiful looking, wonderful typography. And in the scouts and the guides, they had badges, didn't they? For map reading and compass skills. Did they also have a badge for learning how to fold up the map again <laughs> and put it back in its little pocket? Because that would have been a very useful badge indeed. Talk about challenge. One of the advantages of Google Maps on our phones is that when you take a wrong turning, the system is quite forgiving. No telling off from the digitised voice, just a short chime sound, and the system recalibrates to take account of where you are now. And it does this without any sarcasm. <laughs> it just says, you know, in 400 metres, turn right. It does not blare a loud horn and say, you dummy, you missed your turn off. I have now had to demand more battery power. So all you can do is keep going straight ahead along this hideous road. Do not enjoy the view. Go straight for 400 metres and then turn right if you are capable of it this time. None of that. It's neutral. The system is neutral. Well, in the Gospel Robin read for us, the context is the healing activity of Jesus. Restorative power is going out from him. And when he speaks, Jesus is sharing insights into how others can develop a mindset that will serve them as a guide through life. Happy are the poor, the hungry, and the weeping, who have the promise of something else ahead, the inheritance abundance and laughter that will be recognised and appreciated because they are not the current state of affairs. And you know that prophetic understanding has never been a popularity contest. So people criticise those who come and speak prophecy. And then there are those who are rich and full and content and praised. They do not see the space for anything to be different, not for themselves, 
not for others. The sufficiency they feel is for themselves, and they're not focused on the poor, the hungry, and the weeping. Are these people listening to anti-establishment prophets? It seems unlikely. So remember that the context here is the healing taking place within the large crowd pressing forward to experience the force that people believe can change their lives. And no one who comes forward to Jesus for healing is locked into how he or she has been. I think that the story shows us that Jesus is reorienting how life is to be understood. And to do that, he's not actually sorting people into two types, the deserving and the condemned, not at all. His words are describing states that we move in and out of in this experience of life on earth. For at times we do feel dissatisfied with the world as it is. Depleted and hungry, we yearn for some kind of fulfilment that will make us laugh again. And sometimes we think we've made it and we stop asking, are we there yet? Is there further to go? And how can I be? How can I be so secure? As secure as I think I am when people who are poor, hungry, and hurting are not there yet, are not where they want to be. Oh, there was a map for you, just to show you, just to put us in the map mood. But we'll have a look at this man here. I appreciate so much the teachings of the late Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory, who died in November 2020. And he told this great parable, the parable of a son asking his father a question. Why does the Messiah not come? Asked the son. Maybe in former times the Jews were not ready, but now having endured the Holocaust and returned to Israel, surely they are ready. I will tell you a great secret. The father dropped his voice to a whisper as he spoke to his son. It is not we who are waiting for a Messiah. It is the Messiah who is waiting for us. He has been here all the time. It is we who are not yet ready for him. I find this a very compelling story for the followers of Jesus. Life takes its twists and turns, and we all know that. It's the time for us to learn to be more receptive to the still, small voice that reassures us all is not lost. The next turning point is just ahead. The kingdom of God is not a piece of real estate we get to and the gates close because we've made it. Not in this life, at least, not on earth. The kingdom of God on earth is not real estate, but it's a state of mind. We're ushering in the kingdom only when we start to notice again what we've taken for granted and we begin to act differently. Perhaps you remember the old book, The Pilgrim's Progress. Sometimes there's a pause in our progress. We've gone too fast, taken a wrong turning. There's a setback. Robin brought us a poem about being careful not to go too fast. At other times we slow down, as in Michael Lunick's poem. But perhaps we've slowed down to the point that we've stopped. We've perhaps lost touch with what he calls the embrace of the common soul. We've become too internalised. We've stopped. Well, to quote Lunig again, I think Jesus offers us another way of being, another way of knowing. And this way requires us to see that the landscape of our heart is about taking decisions and making affirming moves through the terrain of life's vast experience. And our lesson could be that my experience cannot define anyone else's experience. What the Jesus way can do 
is help us to stand on a level place of inquiry, understanding and compassion where healing can be known. If we can be at home in ourselves, maybe we can be more compassionate to others as they are asking themselves the question, are we there yet? Is there further to go? So it is. Amen. So thinking about the Gospel today and uh, the thoughts expressed so far, thinking about the fact that Jesus uh, is often, his words are often about states of mind, the feelings in our hearts. And because he spoke in a way that recognised that people go through different phases and stages in our lives, we have our ups and our downs. Sometimes his words have been taken to mean this kind of person versus that kind of person. And the Jesus way is to look for that common embrace which surrounds us all. So we're going to have some quiet prayer before Gary brings us our prayers for others. And so to do this, just be comfortable. If you'd like to close your eyes, close your eyes. If you would like to fix your gaze on some soft point, look at the flowers maybe. Just look at some point in the ceiling, do that. Just do whatever you want to do to be comfortable. And just, uh, just notice your breathing really. Don't change your breathing. Just notice your breathing in. Notice your breathing out. your breathing in. Maybe just hold for a moment and breathe out. No requirements on you to think anything other than what is in your heart. And Gwen is going to play for us. We're just going to keep breathing. We're going to breathe in. We're going to be gentle and we're going to breathe out.
really the spirit of the God rest upon each and every one of you in this name. Lord Almighty, we are blessed by your love, which is constantly in our lives. We thank you for the gift of prayer, which keeps us in the circle in your love and in our lives. As this, as this year unfolds, with opportunities, may we be beacons of your light among people. May we inspire each one to be doers of this, of this offering all that we can to enrich your kingdom on earth. We thank you for all who serve on committees. Thank you, Lord, for their inspiration. Thank you for their willingness. Bless them in all their efforts. Inspire them in their efforts for one another. We do pray especially for people in other parts of the world. We particularly remember the people in the South Island at this time, affected by the difficulties of having to be away from their homes and rescued. Bless all those in Tonga at this time. Lord, enrich that nation, we pray. Very close to all those who are offering aid and support. We thank you for the many who work tirelessly for the safety of others. Bless them in this time. In these certain days of COVID, lead us, we pray. Be with world leaders. Agree with them, Lord, as we, they prepare for their many peoples and nations. We thank you, Lord, for the many people who are involved in the emergency services worldwide. Thank you, Lord, for their time. Thank you for their efforts. Lord, in this time, we bring those who are close to us in prayer. Lord, as we go from here, may we be doers of your word, doing what it is, Lord, to serve you and to serve others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. So we ask God's blessing on all giving that has a mark at its heart. May all the gifts in their many forms which are offered through this community build the mark. May our gifts shared be a blessing to those who receive and those who give. In the name of Jesus, who modelled Manaki Tanga in word and action, we pray. Amen.